Welcome back to AM Northwest. If you're age 66 or will be by April 30th, you must take immediate action to protect your Social Security benefits. Here to explain why, we welcome back from Swanson Financial, David Swanson. Good to have you. So right. let's talk about this. What do we need to do if we're going to turn 66 or we are 66? Well, if you haven't taken steps to protect your Social Security benefits, you must do that by the end of this month. And if you don't, you may be losing benefits for you and your spouse. And why did that come into being in the first place, do you know? Yeah, we um, had some Social Security forms that came through in November of last year as a result of a budget act that was passed. And um, what happened was, was it uh, eliminated a lot of Social Security benefits for the average working person. So what do you suggest we do? Well, first of all, seek out and protect your benefits. If you're age 66, you need to get in touch with someone who's competent in Social Security and get the right answers to your questions on how can I protect myself and my family. So you can contact our office. Or, or someone at Social Security Administration as well. Now, uh, so I know we took some questions from our viewers, so yes. let me ask you some of those questions. Uh, this one is, my spouse and I are both 66 and have not started Social Security. Does this new law affect our benefits in any way? Uh, the, absolutely. This, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's you're the prime candidate. You need to be doing something right now to protect those benefits, or you will lose the opportunity for the spouse to uh, gain half of the primary Social Security recipient's benefits. If you do not do that, you will not be able to claim and suspend like we had always in the past. So it's a big tool that we've used for the last 10 or 15 years to help people extend their retirement savings, and now that's gone. So what do you mean by file and suspend? Well, what you, you had the opportunity to do as uh, at age 66, you could go in and you could start your benefit and stop it. And then your own individual benefit would be able to grow at 8% per year or 32% from age 66 to age 70. Sure. When you claim and suspend, it allowed your spouse then to claim half of your benefit, which is a huge opportunity. Now, their benefit didn't have to be claimed, so their benefit also grew at 8% until age 70, while claiming half of the primary um, Social Security recipient's uh, Social Security. We don't have that anymore. That's all changing. And if you do not, if you have not preserved that right yet in your age 66, you need to do that right away. Okay, what if, let's say you're divorced and you were married for quite some time to someone, are you eligible to get his or her Social Security benefits? Oh, absolutely. Um, and that's a big point of confusion. People don't understand that. I had a gentleman that um, uh, came in our office the other day and he had been married uh, a couple of times and um, he didn't realize that actually he was able to get benefits from either of his divorced uh, individuals. So we, we want to make sure that you find out what your best Social Security options are and you just need to look at everything that that's available and decide what works best for you. Okay, another question. We are ages 60 and 61. What effect will these new rules have on our Social Security? Well, if you're 61, uh, you're, you, you've missed the boat. They have targeted you. Your Social Security benefits have been um, effectively eliminated under the old rules. So if you're younger, the, the average couple pays in about $850,000 into Social Security in their, in their working lives. Uh, the average couple that lives to be about 82 284, which is life expectancy for you and I, they're going to get out about $1.3 million. If you live into your 90s, about $2.3 million. But if you don't claim the right strategy, you could get a whole lot less. That's why you need to look at what your different choices are. Okay, so we want to take some more questions. Sure. So we're going to take a break and come back with more questions for David. We'll be right back. Welcome back. David Swanson of Swanson Financial is here answering your questions about getting the most out of your retirement benefits. So I have another question for you. Uh, one viewer wrote, do the new rules make planning for retirement easier or more complicated? The intent of the law was to make things easier, and as most government intervention, it made it even more complicated. It got it wrong. And why it makes it more complicated is that now, with the reduction of Social Security benefits, you have to plan even more on using your other savings dollars. We, we were forced from pensions to 401ks in our work, so we would have to fund them ourselves. Um, now we're being forced to not use the Social Security that we've put aside for our whole working lives and take money from other resources and so planning becomes even more important so my job has become even more relevant than it had in the past all right all right another question what can I do to ensure I receive the maximum Social Security benefit I'm entitled to 
oh, um, you need to look at all your different options. So you need to plan from receiving early benefit at age 62 until receiving a benefit at age 70 and all your spousal options between that. And once you have um, delineated all your different choices, you eliminate the ones that don't work for your family. And what's left is the plan that fits best for your the rest of your life for your Social Security. Okay, another viewer wrote, I'm still working at age 66. My wife is retired. Can I still work and apply for Social Security benefits? Uh, if you're working at age 66, you can make as much income as you want. There's no wage penalty. You can apply for benefit, and that, that person needs to make sure that they apply for benefits uh, and at least claim and suspend before age 66 to allow the spouse to get the spousal benefit. Very, very important. Very important. Mm -hmm. um, another viewer wrote, we are both retiring soon. What can we do to get prepared to make the best choices with our retirement savings? So the, 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 the way that you can combat this is with knowledge and information. So you've got to gather as much data as you possibly can to find out what your different choices are. We offer a number of free workshops. You can contact our office directly. But the idea is, is that if you're going to go to Social Security and you're going to ask them specific uh, things to help you with, you need to know what those questions are. So get prepared. Get the ammunition. Get the arrows in your quiver to be able to ask those proper questions. You can do that at our free workshops or you can contact our office directly. Well, let's say someone's in their 50s. What do you suggest <clears throat> they do when, it, when they're looking forward to retirement? Number one, pay your debt down. Okay. Number two, max out your retirement savings accounts, your 401ks, your 403bs. That's the best place to put your money in. Um, do everything you can to live within your means. Have a plan of how you're going to spend your money and how you're going to save your money. And then make some realistic expectations about what you want to do in retirement. If you, if you want to fly around the world and travel, fantastic. Make sure that you have your savings in accordance with that. If you're planning for big dreams in retirement and you haven't saved for those, being broke in your 70s is not no retirement plan for anybody. Right, absolutely. Um, and when, when people are thinking about retirement, do you say to look at their different sources of income, what they're going to have to deal with? Absolutely. What they have? Yeah. Not even just income, but they have kind of three pools. The retirement savings is the money that they put aside. They bought uh, real estate, they have money in their retirement accounts, they have money in their mutual funds, all the money they've saved. Then they have income sources, maybe from their pension, maybe from Social Security, maybe from the rental property. That's also income that they have coming in. So they have to look at how all of that flows together. Remember, retirement, the fuel that we live on in retirement is income that we generate. So we have to convert everything that we have to an income stream. And by God, we've worked our whole lives to get to this point. Now it's about converting it to a cash flow that you can never outlive. And that's what we try to do. We build income streams for people that they can never run out of cash for the rest of their life. Do you find that when people retire at 66, say that they find that they want to get back to work? Most, um, we, they did a survey. They looked at a bunch of people before and after they retired. About 25% of the people said that I'm gonna go back to work after I retire. When they looked at the next year, 50% of the people are actually working. Now, working for, for guys, there's only so many times you can arrange your screws in your workshop, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so much, many times you can walk your dog. How many fun things you can do? But, so some people go back to work because it's mentally stimulating. Right. They feel part of something they want, not necessarily just for the money. And I don't mean working even for money, even volunteering or whatever, but you want to be a part of someone in a group. So it's really important for quality of life to be doing things that you feel good. So, but having to go back to work because you don't have money is way different than volunteering at your church. Right, absolutely. I want to tell folks if they'd like to find out more, Swanson Financial, the number is 503-603-9900. We'll put all that information for you on our website at k2.com. David, thank you very much. Appreciate it.